because we would hear it, that, that they were, you know, spending a lot of money in hotels and going on trips and stuff like that, kind of petty stuff. But, but the city was actually feeding us all this information from their, the, the, the uh, um, you know, the, the treasurer's office. The, we were getting all the, the receipts and stuff like that. So they, they were pretty much were trying to discredit the Model City Agency. But for a while, I think it, it did serve. It was a, you say, Jim, the, the uh, you know people came into politics and got involved and stuff. That, that was good. But as far as the projects themselves were concerned, I don't think that they were participatory at any period of time. You may disagree. Yeah. But how about Boston? Did, did they? Uh, well, it, it's interesting. I mean, that um, I think that you, there's evolution took place of it starts off certainly in the 1950s before Lowe got there under Hines, Mayor Hines. It was this the, the greatest travesty. At least it's lo often looked that way of urban renewal, the destruction of the West End neighborhood, which was a heavily immigrant neighborhood um, where now um, uh, Mass General is located and. Um, and the, the Charles River Park uh, housing, middle class housing, was part of this 1950s uh, orientation. And we've got to figure out a way to keep the middle, middle class people in the city. And so they put up these apartment buildings. Um, but over time, it did become, uh, there, there were those same pressures that I saw in New Haven for more participation. But I do think it's interesting to see that there was variation. It's not so sim easy to kind of, to, to say this group was on one side and this group was on the other. One of the interesting cases that I uh, found in Boston was where the middle class black community in Roxbury was very positive about urban renewal. And they welcomed, when Lowe came, he, was, he got bombarded by letters and telegrams upon, upon <coughs> his sort of uh, becoming the head of the Boston Redevelopment Authority by this middle class community in Roxbury saying, don't forget us, we really want that urban renewal attention. And one of the issues that was at work here was that these were middle class blacks who could only own homes in that one neighborhood of Washington, uh, in Roxbury. Washington Park was, had been a middle class Jewish neighborhood. Jews had moved out. Uh, there were, they were feeling the encroachments of more low-income people, and they were desperate to have city resources and federal resources to help them improve this one neighborhood. So it's it's complicated. There were definitely, you can't just say, you know, uh, I think urban renewal is all about black Negro removal, which was a, is a kind of standard line. There were class differences within the African-American community, and people had you know, options that varied by their social class position. So it's important that we really kind of look hard at you know, who's wanting these, this investment and for what reasons and what options that they had. I think in New London, um, the turning point um, was maybe the Union Station, the controversy over, over Union Station. So it came from the historic preservation people, mm -hmm. not from the general populace. Um, this was to save it. To, to, to save the right. station. And that's a, at, at that point, I think um, Frank Driscoll, uh, who was the city manager and had been the, the leader of the, the executive director of the redevelopment agency before that, um, he changed his mind about, you know, these uh, clearance. He had started by wanting to, to, to get rid of it and then... Well, no, he, 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 he was... He sort of didn't want to get rid of it from the beginning, but he had been part of it when they were in, in the winter clearance and stuff like that. But um, and so he he became sort of a preservationist, and, and I think out of the same movement, the New London Landmarks actually formed. That was mm -hmm. yeah, that, that was, was the same in Boston too. Came to serve <coughs> the surface. Uh, so I mean, the community gains a voice when it becomes a group of organized interests. Seems to be key. Um, uh, Laura, picking up for yeah, you. A, a couple things. I wanted to say that I had the opportunity to conduct oral histories with some of the Black New Londoners who lived through urban renewal, and I have to confirm what you're saying that it was a very mixed reaction. Mm -hmm. um, 
renters in particular told me that they, at least some of them, did get help relocating. And one woman said that um, when she moved to the Crystal Avenue high rises from this substandard housing where she was raising five children with no heat or hot water in a house that she said wasn't fit for humans to live in, she said she felt like she got a whole new life. Um, and I also spoke to a member of the NAACP back then who told me that he supported it um, because he thought it would lead to a more integrated city. Exactly. But for homeowners, especially for black homeowners, um, what I heard was that they did not get properly compensated because their neighborhood was undervalued. And in fact, we have the redevelopment agency forms in our office and you can see how the neighborhoods were rated and one of the conditions that that would lead to a lower rating was a minority neighborhood um, redlining absolutely and, and, yeah and so when when people blame urban renewal for a racist a systemically racist outcome i think there's part of that Certain, I mean, certain neighborhoods were to be cleared and others weren't, but there were probably mixed motivations and mixed outcomes. But the underlying racist sin was the federal policies that pushed people to the suburbs, subsidized their mortgages that were only available to white residents. And to this day, we're wrestling with generations of minority families who weren't able to accrue generational wealth and, and then get stuck with the, the nonprofit social services. And when you talk about trying to raise the revenue for a city that's cash strapped, you can talk about trying to, you know, have to tax, um, you know, like the water, the water authority or something that we can try to tax for services as opposed to property taxes. And maybe we can come up with something more equitable that way. But you mentioned the word reparations earlier tonight, and the real issue is that money has to come from the suburbs, because the suburbs gain wealth. And, and you're still taking from too small of a pot if you're trying to build our services just from what we have in the cities. Mm -hmm. do, do you have any ideas for how to do that? We <laughs> 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 need a citizen epiphany in the state in the country, in the country about a, people taking a little more responsibility for uh, you know for community we seem to have evolved over this same time period to kind of wor worship the independent operator the cowboy who rides off into the sunset you know and it is just totally uh, uh, it's in, in control and that, that's an unrealistic picture Communities have always were created to produce community because the collective is, uh, you know, is, is more powerful than, than the individual. We, we don't seem to have embraced that concept. This kind of recent wave of, uh, of uh, kind of appreciation of, of urban living is maybe one, one manifestation to it. You know, we know from an environmental perspective that uh, that living in an urban area is, is infinitely, you know, more uh, uh, environmentally sustainable than scattering throughout throughout the landscape. So you know, maybe that will that will help. Uh, you know, London has been very late to the game. People moving back in the in the seventy the late seventies we had program trying to get. Um, uh, properties on Bank Street renovated. They had, they had architects who did, did, did the entire facade of all of Bank Street, giving it to property owners, actually giving them money to fix their property if they would do like extreme things like, you know, maybe have like a hundred amp service in your building so it doesn't burn down. It still had the old, uh, a lot of the ball and tube uh, 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 wiring and um, the you know, our success rate was so poor, maybe 10 percent of uh, of the property owners were approached. They didn't see uh, it worth them putting any money, but they you know they're getting a revenue stream out of it. But you know let's let's fix up the upper floors, you know, improve the uh, uh, the appearance. Maybe you'd be able to attract some. You know some uh, 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 
uh, new ground floor uh, occupant. Didn't hear it. It took all the way until really at the 2000 when it uh, started to slowly get some reinvestment. And now largely out of towners who have come in, seen an, an investment operator doing basically the gut rehab that was, that was necessary. And on the heels of that have been uh, people who have been, you know, willing to live downtown. I think the only successful effort to get people back downtown was the Star Street project. 21 houses that were, uh, let's see, 18 were uh, literally abandoned. They were, they were, uh, um, you know, seagulls were, were living, were living in. They were just, they were wide open. Took a little acquisition, uh, big debate by city council to to work with at that time was a savings bank of New London, which became Citizens, uh, to, to basically take the properties, do, do a gut rehab, but in the context of the historical uh, character of each of those buildings, had to have owner occupancy, uh, number were two and three, three unit buildings, so that allowed uh, you know, some cash flow to make the numbers come out. And uh, it's today you go down, it still works, it's still successful. A lot of home ownership, a lot of pride in that. It, it's, a, it's a local historic district also, which is kind of an example of, you know, one thing that, uh, that, that was, done, that was done, done right and brought, brought back a street uh, that, uh, that kind of celebrates that wailing air and some, some great architecture and, uh, and that you could live downtown you know, not uh, be dragged away by these demons that, um, that never really existed, but the fabrication of, uh, of many people's minds, uh, the, the, the fear of, of living in London. Uh, anyway. I, I saw a couple more questions out there, but I think we can continue this conversation more informally at a reception just outside. So thank you for coming, and please be